Yeah. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for doing the the new fancy background there, Paul. Yeah. It's going to talk to me while I'm doing this. So I have to pet. This is fun. Pet the newt. Sounds good. I love the newt. Um, yeah. Thanks for setting this up too. Yeah. Well, we're in, we just got through the hottest piece of the summer so far. Hopefully. More is coming, unfortunately. Yeah. How'd y'all fare? Fine. <laughs> 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 made it work that's for sure yeah. i've got a mm -hmm. i pretty much i set up a pool for the dogs which i'll talk about in a second but i used it so it was a kitty pool <laughs> floaty in it nice that's yeah. great we yeah. have a stock tank that like a 300 gallon like <laughs> stock tank that we set up and fill up with water but my dog acts like it's acid, so I have to like get his keep. You know, yeah, he's not really into what this, nope. but <laughs> it's really nice for us. So. Yeah, I found it funny over the years, especially Dax when he was a puppy. He used to love the pool, but as he's getting older, he's like more cautious and aware of it. Right. Um, so we definitely have to like we had to work on it more than I really wanted to. Um, I also have a house full of small critters, and so I had to set up little like cooling areas for all my rats and my cat and it was very fun <laughs> catching <laughs> it busy <laughs> right okay plus you did it in class right that was kind of cool that yeah yeah we can talk a, uh, about that a little bit later too but yeah setting up a little a sensory pool garden yeah water fun. space yeah. for the puppies yeah right well, well let's dive in yeah, cool. All right. So I figured we could take some time to introduce ourselves like normal. Yeah. Okay. Should I go first? Because that's me. First, because that's your head. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Emma. I'm co-owner of Happy Dog Institute with Heather. And um, we are, um, oh, and I need to bow out. So I'll let Heather introduce herself <laughs> okay so, um i'm heather uh as emma said co-owner of happy dog institute and uh i teach a lot of our classes our core classes awesome um i'm paul i uh teach a lot of the puppy one and puppy two classes as well as our uh chaotic canine classes so maybe some of the other core classes um yeah yeah totally. and then cool. ashley probably in a minute yeah she'll probably jump in um ashley co-teaches our uh chaotic canine classes with me and um does the some of the fun foundations and puppy three as well all across the board cool do you want to let's just dive in i'm assuming that we'll get to know each other as this goes on. Oh, lost you. Okay, cool. Hope, hopefully right. we're still going, but my phone connection is having some problems. So I think if okay. you keep talking, you'll be up. Yeah, it didn't tell me that the recording stopped. So um, it did. No, it didn't. So I think we're still okay. going. Cool. Yeah, I thought first, um, before diving into what to do when it's too hot, we would actually talk about when we know that it's too hot. Um, I think as people, we know when we're too hot, um, but it can kind of be uh, hard to know what that means for our dogs. Um, and so I think it's also important to note that what is hot for one dog might be different than for others. Um, so like in puppy class, I'm very conscious about it because, uh, I don't know, I guess um, heat sensitivity can vary based on your dog's age, the breed and coat type, um, as well as like grooming status, right? Um, I think also within breeds, we're kind of thinking about those brachiocephalic or short-nosed 
um, dogs can have a harder time panting and regulating their body heat as well. Yes. Sorry. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, good. I'm back. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, totally. And, you know, a lot of those, uh, the indicators that I often look for is, you know, that heavy panting, real wide open mouth, right? Um, uh, they, the peeled back lips, you know, cause I'm just too hot. And also the splat, I like to think about the splat, you know, when they just like go flat out. Um, a lot of times uh, that can happen too. Absolutely. Hey, Ashley. Hi, hey, Ashley. Oh, Sorry, I'm. <laughs> You're great. Thanks for joining and jumping in. Uh, we introduced you for you. <laughs> Um, but we were just kind of talking about how to know when it's too hot for your individual dog. Um, I think it's great because we all have different personal experience with different breeds, right? So what looks like overheating for my collie or uh, for my chihuahua who really likes to bake herself um, looks very different for your dogs. Yeah. Right. And even amongst my two dogs, there's, you know, the, each one of them is individual because Newton gets hotter faster. Um, you know, he's a little bit older. He, he's considered slightly brachycephalic. I can't say that word, but you know, and, uh, and then, um, but Wyatt loves to like, she goes outside at 90 and lays on her side in the sun, sun babes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so it takes her, a, she's a lot more heat tolerant. I would call mm. it. Yeah, I think that's a great way of putting it. My Chihuahua, I like to joke that she bakes herself because she does, but she is also a lot more heat tolerant than my Collie who melts when it's like over 75. We see a lot of that heavy panting, that sluggishness. Um, so cool. Um, I think it's also important, right? Like talking about breed, but also what your goal activity is for the day, right? So um, it might be too hot in one location, right? Like, let's just say like desert versus beach, right? You have very different settings. Um, and if your goal activity is like a slow, a slow meandering walk through the woods versus something that's a little bit heavier, right? Or more exhausting, like agility lessons in the right. sun. Yep, totally. And um, kind of having an idea of what is gonna win too, to do some of your like training and, um, or um, some of your activities, choosing the right time of day for that or the right, um, you know, location, making sure you're shaded or that the dogs get shade quickly, monitoring those types of things as well. Totally. Awesome. Um, and then I just put the little, I don't remember what the actual rule is, right? But the five second rule, of if you can put your hand on the sidewalk for like five seconds, if it's too hot, it's too hot for your dog's feet. Um, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Because I think it's also taller, or it's also dependent about on the dog, like in their feet sensitivity. Yeah. Um, I was out with somebody recently and it was pretty hot. It was like 85 and we were in and out of the shade, but I, I observed the dog picking his feet up, you know, mm. so we yeah. moved them off the concrete and, and where my dogs had walked on it just fine, you know? So yeah. it just really depends on, and being observant on, on um, what your dog is actually doing too. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, that can in part go back to breed where some breeds just genetically have more pain tolerance, right? That's um, true. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Awesome. The other thing uh, too is like what, substance are you walking on because a lot of times yeah. I think people forget about like tar so yeah. like when it's really hot the road there's tar it can get stuck there and burn longer so just being aware of your overall surroundings for sure absolutely and even right like instead of just thinking like grass is grass is it like green healthy freshly watered grass versus like dry spiky grass mm -hmm. right awesome all right um, so I'm just going to assume that everybody knows a little bit more about this than me. Um, but I thought we should actually 
talk about those specific signs of overheating. Um, so Heather, you brought up that like heavy panting and the wide commissures. I love saying that now that I know that that's a thing. Um, also the like splute, but what are some other signs that you all know of? The spatulated tongue where the bottom part gets wider. Oh, yeah. Okay. We learned about that in pet CPR first aid. Quick um, shout out for that. Oh, we need. <laughs> That's right. Watch for that coming up at Happy Dog Institute. Um, also, the curling of the tongue, like when it curls up, spatula, yeah. and then the curl up of the tongue. Awesome. Yeah, I also heard that like looking for like bright red gums or a bright red tongue is a sign, um, potential sign of heat exhaustion too. And I guess when it gets real bad, the, the bottom actually can turn purpley in color. Oh, so. cool. Yeah. Yikes. Awesome. Yeah. Hopefully you seriously. never see that, but if you do. Just... Yeah. Um, so some other things too are looking for like lethargy or like weakness or unsteadiness, right? Um, I know sometimes we really like to, uh, let's just say exhaust or tire our dogs right? So even though it might seem normal that you're playing fetch and your dog is starting to like heavily pant um, and get tired, there is such a thing as like, like too much of that, right? So if they're looking a little bit unsteady on their legs, um, they're moving a lot slower. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, ov and overheating, like heat exhaustion in dogs or any animal is a serious, like, yeah concern veterinary quick you know quick response needed um, when your dog has gotten to that point so it's a good idea to be sort of um, proactive about that and for some dogs you know being in the water is great but some for some dogs it can be also overdoing for them to be in the water I can't remember what that's called but you know a lot of border collies have that sort of they they get in and um, take on a lot of water and that can be uh, a serious medical condition as well totally water intoxication that's it Thanks. nothing is safe not even water <laughs> yeah and I think for that right like even if we're trying to like get exercise in while it's cool just doing regular breaks or check-ins right um do a swim or a ball toss or two and then right pause check in see how your dog's doing um and then continue on or just take a, a full-on break yeah cool all right should we move on to the fun stuff do it okay um so indoor and outdoor activities let's talk about what y'all do in the heat Like activity wise, not much. <laughs> yeah, nothing. <laughs> we well, like, sit let's... underneath the um, portable air conditioning and just look at each other like this is the worst of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> Still love it. Still an activity though, right? Nothing, <laughs> totally an activity. Right? I'm definitely my, um, this last week, my, you know, like I trained very minimally. Um, if I did anything, it was in the mornings or late evenings, and they were much shorter. Um, and we did a lot of sit inside in the portable air conditioner sort of thing in front of the fans. Totally, yeah. Yep, that sounds about right. I um, did a lot of, yeah, sitting around and reflecting and <laughs> going outside and deciding it was too hot to be there and yeah hiding back inside yeah went yeah. to the beach yeah. nice. Heather gave us the idea of going to the beach which was we were like it was so foggy we couldn't even see it and it was like 65 degrees yeah nice. the ocean and my family was a little bit irritated with me for hearing about that <laughs> <laughs> they weren't with <laughs> they didn't go to the beach <laughs> yeah. um did y'all do I was a little bit slow on the lake frozen food or even like wet food um but I would say like halfway through the week I was like right I should soak some kibble and at least have like cool evening dinner time available um and it at least takes like 
it takes my chihuahua like five minutes for a Kong, but it takes my terrier at least a half an hour. So that's mm-hmm. some busy work too. Yeah. yeah, we did raw frozen bones. Um, yes. Feed with caution because they can do a little bit of a tummy upset, mm-hmm. but my dogs are used to it. So they uh, enjoyed that for sure. Yeah. By the end of the weekend, we, we were putting like just, you know, ice in the water and my husband kept putting the fan in front of the dog and then uh-huh. he would move. And then finally, by the end of the weekend, the dog was laying in front of the fan. I think it like clicked. He was like, all right, that's really nice. But that's about it. On our yeah, Cody, our uh, coworker dropped off some uh, some popsicles at my house. Oh, to test out, And the dogs love them. So that was fun, like fruit juice or fruit, uh, fruit and like goat milk blended together, frozen in really cute little uh, silicone molds with um, yeah. with chewy. So we definitely did a lot more of like slow food work and um, and did stuff topples. I didn't do bones this week. I forgot. That would have yeah. been good. I also yeah. did not prepare bones. Yeah, I did. Um, I mean, mostly for my rats, to be honest. But then I jumped it in for the um, my dogs, but I have a bunch of um, pie pans from the dollar store. And so I just fill them like half with like water or yogurt or something like that and then freeze them. Um, so the next day I could put more water or food or something on top of it. And by the time they were done, it was nice and cool and melted. Great idea. Yeah, yeah. we usually do um, our outdoor activities. I think we already hit it, but like early in the morning and then just like quick potty breaks and during the day so um try to keep toys put away to show them that like we're just going out to potty we're coming back like this isn't a go out get crazy type situation yeah Yeah. I definitely and I did practice did some agility practice this week but we made sure that it was early in the morning and we were in the shade um when we were outside and then um and then at headquarters you know I did some uh even though we did cancel classes because it was so hot um we I did a lot of like opening up the building first thing in the morning and then filming uh, for some makeup session stuff. And I did that when it was still cool too. So it was really making sure that it was, you know, the dogs weren't getting overly heated. Yeah, I love your idea, Ashley, of like putting the toys away and stuff like that Um, along the same lines. I definitely did like sporadic short exercises but I let my dogs guide it right so I had some jumps out in my um, front yard which is sunny um, but I just cut the grass so I put them out there uh, and at one point I let my dogs out and Dax my collie was like oh we do jumps now and I was like okay do you want to do one or two we'll do one or two and then um, he was into it and then I was like you want to come back for three and he's like no and I was like cool (laughs) good right so instead of thinking like oh we'll do some training for just a little bit halfway through the day, if your dog is tapping out, tap out with them. Um, I also also think it's, oh, I'm so sorry. I was just going to say, I think it's important to remember that our working breed dogs will sometimes not self-regulate. And so even if they're like, I still want to chase the ball or I still want to do the jumps, you got to make sure that they're not uh, drive dumb, they call it, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to where they're just so focused on the task at hand that they don't realize that they're overheating or exhausted. Absolutely, yeah. And I think as you all kind of pointed out, I like to have like, um, uh, what do I want to call it? Um, like shade areas, um, kind of like little sensory gardens in each like section of my house so there's definitely a part of my property that is mostly shaded and so I put some like just fun cooling mats and a fan and some like scavenger hunt stuff out there too so if my dogs are like no we are staying outside I can be like cool we're gonna go over here right Mm -hmm. um I think that some of that self-preservation aspect that you were bringing up Ashley right of like okay fine but let's go in this area first (laughs) Yeah. Cool. Um, and then what are some like, so I know you kind of brought up um, making sure we're doing stuff like early in the morning or in the evening when it's cooler. Um, but like, what do I want to say? 
what if you do have to run errands, right? Or you had planned to go to the pet store and you wanted to bring your dog along. Um, would you suggest that people still bring their dogs or is this like a, no, it's just better to leave them at home type of situation? Mm, good question. I think that if it's an instance where your dog is allowed to go in with you and they are able to be carried and the location is possibly air conditioned, there's a lot of stipulations, right? For in my mind, then I would say, yeah, take your dog to the pet store, right? If it's air conditioned, cause there's a cool spot that they could be and they're small enough to be carried over the, la the black top or there's a place, you know, close to park to and they don't have to be left in the car, right? When or we start have booties, which is a thing. That's yeah. true. That's true. Um, or train them to wear booties. And, um, but so often, you know, it's, I get caught in this of like, oh, I got to run an errand. I'm gonna, just going to pop in real quick with my dogs in the car, right? Not a good idea because we all know, and we've all seen the graphics and we all know how hot it can get, how quickly in our vehicles, even the window cracked you know, and, uh, and all of that. So it's, I definitely know people this weekend who are trialing, you know, on an agility show. And I think probably the mass majority of them, even if they're parked in the shade, probably pulled their dogs out of the car to create them in the shade. You know, it's like just way, there's a point to which it just gets way hot. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. That brings us to our next slide. So, so paddle boarding or kayaking with your dog is a is definitely something that a lot of people do, or teaching their dogs to swim um, and and taking their dogs swimming. You know, fetching bumpers or doing dock diving. Um, that happens a lot. Um, other sports that keep happening during the summers is there's a you know, barn hunt, although they did cancel this week because it was too hot for the rats. Um, but barn hunt, um, agility continues on. That seems to be a, you know, in most places, a sort of high summer sport. And um, uh, there's a newer scent work sport where the dogs hunt, uh, um, hunt for sheds and urban rats and your personal items. And those uh, are going on throughout the summer as well. So there's a good amount of sports that happens through the summer tracking. I know a lot of the bite sports, um, bitey dog sports. So that also continues to happen during that time. So there's, there's a lot of things that are happening. Oh yeah, fast cat, right. There's, I mean, it's a lot. I found that when I got into dog sports, um, a lot of sports people have like really awesome setups that I hadn't heard or thought about or been introduced to until I was actually in that situation, right? Um, so that whole piece about setting up shaded areas in and around your car, whether that's crates um, or expense for your dogs, using mm -hmm. we've got the shade cloths or the illuminettes up at headquarters as well. Um, but using those in or around your car, um, as well as like battery powered fans. Uh, and it's surprisingly, I've definitely in, um, we have done dog shows like out in Eastern Washington in the middle of summer. And so I've had to like hunker down in the car with my dogs because it was so hot outside. Um, but it stayed surprisingly cool in there as well. Yeah. I think that those, you know, that's doing agility as long as I've had ha, done, we, I have like all the summer things, you know, it's like cool mats, they sell dog cooling coats, uh, battery operated fans, um, the Illuminate cover you talked about, pop-up tents, um, misters, you know, misting systems or like uh, squeeze bottles that have a misting mister on them. Uh, you know, cooling stuff for us. So making sure you've got a hat and your dog is used to you wearing a hat. There's another one, right? And then uh, 
one of my biggest hacks is uh, the chamois cloths you can get from the um, uh, automotive parts store. And it's in the cleaning section and they make these like, um, they're super absorbent polishing cloths, not microfiber, and they soak up water and they make dog coats out of them. And they're also really great for like, you can soak them in cold water and put them over your neck for you. Um, and, uh, you know, and then they also make portable pools. So I have also been in a place and done it where it's like, you just bring your own pool or they provide you with a pool if there's enough water access. Um, but I think that's huge. Uh, I went to a national event and we, it was like, you know, in the high nineties in California and our dogs weren't used to it. So it was like full on cover, like water access, cooling mats, fans, like the whole thing. And we just try to keep it at least five to 10 degrees cooler where the dogs were open crates too. Like, so X pens or wire crates was, um, you know, where they get a lot of airflow through versus the more solid wall crates. Um, I think that's really important as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I think those are all really great ideas um and i saw something recently that i think is worth it right so they make like cooling coats specifically for dogs but there's a difference um between getting something like a, a cooling coat or quickly running a towel over your dog versus like wrapping your dog in a wet towel so yes. i was seeing that wrapping your dog in a wet towel actually prohibits a lot of their natural ability to uh, circulate air and so they can still overheat um, versus cooling coats are actually made for your dog to to wear. Right and I think it depends on if you use one of those chamois to cool your dog down or you put that on them if you then put them in their car where it builds humidity it's not mm. not cooled you actually can overheat your dog so if you are like because then you're just warming up your dog and the cooling device on them versus like a shaded shade cloth cover or something that can still breathe, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's important too, is like, don't, and even, even just the aspect of getting your dog wet and then putting them someplace warm actually is worse than just having your dog be dry because it builds up humidity and makes it so that they can't cool themselves off. That's a really great point. Awesome. I was going to say, funnily enough, I actually utilize those um, Illuminates and fans a lot in my house. So I have my Illuminate over my big window and it helps a lot. Um, and those portable battery operated fans. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. It's the one time that I wish that, well, I mean, I wish that Tesla made a car that was big enough to hold dogs and dog crates in it because of their dog zone. Like they have that dog zone. I didn't know that. Yeah, they will, it will keep your dog temperature controlled while you're away from your car. Is that a thing that you can get for after, like aftermarket though? Like a thing that keeps your car on? Uh, I don't I'm know either. Yeah, there's some RV temperature gauges that will, there's an app that you can subscribe to that will send you alerts um, that work in a car as well as your RV. Um, and then you can just buy an indoor outdoor thermometer with a reader and so, and put that in your car. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's the mo most inexpensive way to do it too. I've heard horror stories of <clears throat> excuse me those malfunctioning though so it always oh, freaks yeah. me out i wouldn't rely on it if that a hundred percent at least to give you some information but yeah yeah my favorite place to go is uh the cleanrun.com store um oh uh, you know it it has a ton of dog supplies and um they have a whole section on cooling or at least I think they oh, do. Oh, really? Um, and they always have this. Yeah. So they have like a trials and travel section and they have cooling mats, coats, tents, fans, pools, like 
everything you could imagine. They sell Illuminate by the foot, you know, so it's, uh, and ventilation, that's the other thing is, is like, I have these vent locks that are my number one favorite thing where you can still lock your car, but you can open it up um, with fans to create airflow. Oh. Yes. A clean run right now and then they have a ton. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> well, I think it's like, um, <laughs> even if you're not into like dog sports specifically, but it, it can be hard with certain sports are seasonal, right? But then what happens if you're seasoned? So fast cat, right? Which is like chasing a lure tends to mostly be in the spring and summer right. um, if you're actually trialing. But then we hit these like 90 to 100 degree temperatures. And so you're kind of um, trying to figure out what's the best, right? <laughs> to do. <laughs> Um, and also if you even accidentally overheat your dog, right. Um, what's the best way to gradually bring them back down to a reasonable temperature in a, in a safe environment. Right. Yeah. I do know that it's not good to rapid cool. So yes. no right. ice baths. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well and I don't know about you, and but I've known of some dogs who don't want to drink water. So there's that hydration thing too, is like being aware of how much your dog is drinking and how often, and then if you need to supplement something, you know, and they do make a lot of stuff out there that is like, um, uh, you know, Nulo has a line of hydrate products that basically oh. water or they'll drink, you know, like, but you can add things to a dog's water to make it more enticing so they drink more, you know, so things like chicken broth or, mm. you know, so you can kind of encourage them to drink more water if they, if you're finding that they're not consuming enough water and become dehydrated. The next awesome. Time. Yeah. And then uh, extra boost, right? We're doing our summer scavenger hunt throughout August. Yeah which is super exciting. Um, so general plan is every day we're going to post, I posted the full calendar. If you want to catch that, it's on our social media. It'll also be on our newsletter. Um, and uh, every day you can share, comment, or tag us in a story of you doing whatever the topic is with your, with your dog. Um, yeah. We're gonna good motivation yeah absolutely definitely. and we've got a few prizes available too so at the end of the month um, we will pick some winners to send out some awesome fun prizes cool. yeah. yeah do it yeah awesome well cool. So cool thanks everybody yeah Bye. thank you have a good one you yeah. too all right